Last month, many of you uh, appropriately spoke about the injustices taking place in Ukraine. I believe the chancellor wore garb attire that reflected the flag. Um, I saw today Dr. Stern on our closed session call had the flag of Ukraine on his lapel. And I think we do that because we feel a sense of injustice, and it is an injustice that's taking place in yeah. Ukraine, because we feel it in our hearts, because we know that what freedom means to us. And that leads me to um, why I'm so disappointed in one of our current local elected officials. Um, the mayor of Irvine, Farah Khan, uh, has recently mocked the genocide of the Armenians. Um, she did so in meetings with representatives of uh, the government of Turkey, including a local prolific geni uh, denier of the genocide. Um, and that really pierced at my heart and the hearts of many, not only Armenians, but um, the community of Irvine. Uh, Irvine is a fantastic community. It's a tolerant community. Um, we have Irvine Valley College, of course, in, in the heart of Irvine. I remember four years ago when swastikas were painted on a synagogue in Irvine and also on the campus of Irvine Valley College. And I stood on the steps of Irvine City Hall with a bipartisan group of elected officials condemning hate, uh, condemning anti-Semitism, and condemning um, really kind of speech that's, although protected because we are a great country, we allow the speech to happen, but there's no place for it. And I, I turn to Trustee Milchker and I say, what if a local mayor, Farrah Khan, what if she denied the Holocaust and, and ridiculed the massacres of six million Jews? Imagine how you would feel. It would, it would destroy my heart. <laughs> um, and, I, and I saw last week, TJ, your impassioned plea for Ukraine, and I, and I feel it as well. Um, but I have to say, I am profoundly disappointed I would hope that this community college district would stand on its principles, um, the principles of human rights, the principles of justice, um, the principles of self-determination. And let me uh, say one thing about self-determination. The UN Declaration of Human Rights talks about two, well, a lot of protections, but there, there's territorial integrity. That's what's happening in Ukraine but there are people in the world who are not recognized by the United Nations who are subject to racism, injustices, um, discriminatory practices, repression of human rights. And in this case, um, there are many people, but of course I am concerned in this case about the Armenians who live in Nagorno-Karabakh who've been subjected to um, gross violations of human rights by the governments of Azerbaijan and Turkey. And when the mayor of Irvine associates herself with these representatives and does so repeatedly, it's not an isolated incident that happened. Um, she hid the video and it was surfaced uh, last week. She initially came out and denied it. She mocked it and said her, it was her political opponents who planted the video, which was nonsense um, of her mocking uh, the deaths of 1.5 million plus Armenians. Um, she's tried to, um, you know, uh, offer some kind of an apology, and we'll we'll see where this goes. But I would hope that this district, which represents Irvine and Irvine Valley College, would say, just because she's the mayor of a city, and we have a relationship with that city, does that mean we should not stand on principles? I mean, I've heard some comments, well, we better be careful. She's the mayor of Irvine and we have a relationship and they provide some grant money. If the mayor of Irvine is gonna deny us grant money so that she can mock and deny a genocide, let her try to do that. So I asked my colleagues, I see your passion for Ukraine and I have it as well. I met in 1996 with President Clinton. I led a coalition of East, Central and East European groups and we met with him in the Roosevelt Room, and we demanded or urged him to admit into NATO Poland, Hungary, the Czech Republic, uh, the Baltic states, and the remaining states of the former Soviet Union. So I was on the front lines of that. I know what, I know what it means to demand and request uh, the freedoms that we enjoy so much. So I know I've gone over, but I asked the district, the leadership, 
the board members uh, to say that, um, uh, you know, to stand on principle and what we're doing in Ukraine, we are standing on principle, but there are people who don't have a nation state and who aren't protected under the guise of territorial integrity. There's something uh, called self-determination. And I'll close with this. Imagine if the world order in 1776 and 1789 said, we don't support self-determination. What would that mean? Would we be sitting here? We would be in a room like this where I can go over my time for two <laughs> or three, four minutes. Would we be able to do that? What if self-determination um, was not allowed and the world congregated together and made us live under the British monarchy that we didn't want to live under? Would we be here? I don't know. <laughs>